fabulous fiber and fabric friends. Welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Karen and I am your host. Today is Tuesday, September 15th. I recorded last week, but unfortunately it was a hot mess, so I decided to beep, 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 back up and try again today. I was just too frustrated last week and I decided to erase that one and try again. So, I hope everyone is doing well. I want to welcome all of my returning subscribers. Welcome to any new people checking me out for the first time. I hope you find something you like here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Please subscribe and like below. Please comment. I love the comments, love reading the comments. Today, uh, there isn't a lot of knitting, a little bit. There's a lot of sewing. As you can see, I have one lovely garment on. So mostly, if you're here for the fiber, that'll be in the beginning, and then I will go on to a lot of sewing. <clears throat> I've been sewing like a maniac. In fact, it's been like my, <laughs> my own personal sweatshop here. I've been laboring over my, my uh, fabrics and sewing and having just a blast doing it. Let's get started with the fiber. Those of you who follow me on Instagram, I posted earlier today that I'm uh, crushed, crushed beyond belief that the project I just finished, which is the Lady Fingers sweater by More Thunder or Mort, Mort Thunder, Mort Thunder, I will pop in a picture of the pattern. And unfortunately, the dye had bled over all my other colors, but we'll get into that in a second. The pattern is really fun. It's a DK weight sweater. Great um, instructions. Everything about the pattern is fabulous. I decided to change up my colors a little because I really wanted the colors I chose were more neon and bright colors and I wanted the black to pop. So I didn't follow the pattern color changes exactly. Instead, I chose to Instead of, I should have changed, instead of going back to the black here, I should have made another color change and color change and color change. And I think there were five color changes. And then you repeat them. But I wanted the black to make the others pop. So I did it this way, which I think looks still, it looks fabulous. It's a little different look than the original pattern, but still kind of the same. You still see the little lady fingers. The pattern calls for short sleeves. I made long sleeves and I will put this on in a minute for you to show you. I didn't pay attention to how long the garment should be. I knew that I wanted it to hit right around my hip bones. So I kept trying it on and doing it that way. Oh, and you guys, here is a little tip. If you do not have circular needles long enough to try on a garment, which I have some 47 inch circs, um, but if you don't, because I don't have them in every single size, so if you do not have them, what you can do, and which I did do here, is whatever my needle size, I think I used a size 6, US size 6, which is a 4.0 millimeter needle, on this garment. So what I did is I had two 6 circulars, 32 inch circulars, and I would, you know, work my way across half of the body, and then switch to the other circular needle and then knit across. So half the stitches were on one needle, half were on another needle. That way I wasn't going to have any stitches dropping off either end of the needles and I could try on the garment and then when I went to remove it I just would continue with one of the needles and it worked out so that I was back to one needle again. So you may want to try that if you don't have or putting it on waist drum is such a pain in the mm -mm, you know what for me and then getting, sometimes when you try it on, right, the stitches would tighten up and then you go through with the waist and you try to pick it up and you're stabbing the yarn through the middle and it just, it's kind of a, it slows you down. So this way, if you use two circular needles, give that a try and see if that works for you because that might, um, you know, for trying on the garment. Uh, what else can I say? Um... So, as you can see, I made a long sleeve version, and instead of doing a ribbed cuff, at first I had thought I would just, I didn't want to mess with decreases in, because of the patterning, I would have to decrease a lot of stitches to get from 
one color section to another. So I decided, since the arm width was not that big, I thought, well, what if I do sort of bell sleeves and then do, you know, cinch it in quickly and then do a ribbed wrist cuff. Then I started thinking about it and I said, well, I don't know, I do that, you know, we, I have a lot of sweaters that they're, they're ribbed at the cuff and I thought, you know, what if I just knit straight down <clears throat> and make it, I guess it's not really a bell sleeve since it is all the same width from all the way down the sleeve. <clears throat> uh, so I decided to do that and at the end, so I just started my color work at the end here, then I think I knit one row. I might, I might have purled one row and then I bound off or I bound off and purl. I forgot which way I did it. And then I did a slip stitch crochet all the way around the hem. And so it, <clears throat> it looks almost as if this is a I-cord bind off, but it's not. I guess I could have done an I-cord bind off but I find it fast just to do a slip stitch crochet. Some of you have been so sweet on Instagram. You said, oh my God, I love the colors. I love the colors, as is. My problem is, those of you who have followed me, I am a cool, complected person. So muted colors do not look the best. I, I don't wear muted colors well. So I always want to say, I hate muted colors. And it's not that I hate them. I just, I hate them on me. You know, earth tones do not look good on me. And this too has sort of an earth tony look because it's muted. And they're fabulous. Like my sister can wear earth tones. I can't. They just, I'm, and I'm sure some of you are saying, oh, it looks good on you. It doesn't. And it's not what I wanted. I'm just, I'm disappointed. I really wanted the vibrant colors. The vibrant colors look better on me. The brightness, and I really was, I really wanted the neon to pop with the, and the black and the neon were so beautiful popping. And I guess they do still pop a little. And actually, if I can, I'm gonna hold this up and I'm gonna put a picture in side by side. And hopefully you will be able to see the difference or I may try it on and put a, put a picture here side by side. And then you'll see what I'm talking about. Again, it's not the end of the world. There are worse things, but it is a bummer. I rushed for two weeks to finish this, you know, and worked really hard in the long sleeves. And it's just disappointing. Let me put on the garment and you can see how it looks on. It looks fabulous on. I mean, it, if I don't pay attention to the colors, uh, the the sweater looks really beautiful on and I'll try to record I don't know if I'll maybe I'll record some a little bit of twirling at the end or my little my little voguing uh, <laughs> yeah vogue <laughs> I'll do my vogue you guys you know what did I tell you guys speaking of vogue did I tell you guys when and if I did I apologize years ago I worked in film and television and at one point, I dated a talent agent, and he took me to a Madonna concert. This was back in, it was the Blonde Ambition Tour. And he was going on and on, oh, we're going to go to the concert, we have VIP tickets, we get to go in the VIP room, and yada, yada, yada. Um, and a lot of people I worked with were all crazy about, oh, Madonna, Madonna, the Madonna concert. And so when they found out I was going, and I was not that, I, you know, I wasn't a huge fan. I didn't dislike her. I just wasn't a huge Madonna fan. And then when everyone around me was so excited about the concert and, and jealous, I said, wow, I guess this is a big event. Well, I had a blast. I went to the Madonna concert. We had great seats. I think we're 11 rows back. And Madonna is an incredible entertainer. The choreography was beautiful. I love dancing, as many of you know. And so that was really beautiful. And so now that some of my Thursday night knitting pals um, turned me on to Pose, a Netflix series called Pose, uh, and there's all this voguing in it. I'm, I'm just, I'm getting such, well, I, I watched it all already, but I got such a kick out of it. So now I'm incorporating a few poses <laughs> into my videos, my finished object videos. I know, I'm such a dork. You guys, this is what 62, I'm going to be 62 in, what, two, two and a half weeks? So th this is what 62 nuts looks like. I'm such a Looney Tunes. But that's okay, I don't mind. 
Anyway, let me go try this on and you guys can see how it looks on me. So here is, I mean, I really, I love, look at how these sleeves came out. So I do love, I love that I lengthened the sleeves. I love the look of the sweater. It's just the dye, the fading of the dye or the, the, that the black washed out all the other colors. That's unfortunate that that happened. But otherwise, I just love this. What am I wearing? I am wearing the Wilder gown. I want, you know, I wanted to call it the Gower gown. I don't know why. I guess because gown, and so I'm thinking, I don't know why. This is the Wilder gown by Friday Pattern Company. And this is the second version I've made. I don't think I talked about my first version on here. You've probably seen it on a YouTube video. I will either insert pictures or video here and you can see the polka dot version. But this one, actually, I, th I don't know if it's because of the flowers. I feel like I'm in a nightgown or a caftan or something and it's so, it's so fabulous. You guys, first of all, I have to thank Arthella from the Best Day Ever Crafting Podcast. She, we've become friends over this whole quarantine. She and Ty Dye Diva and uh, quite a few other ladies. And so we Zoom together every week. And those ladies are, <laughs> they just are such enablers. Arthella made the Gower, uh, see there I go again, the Wilder gown, but she made the shirt version. I said, oh my God, that is so pretty. I love this little ruffly neckline. I have to make that. So I ordered the pattern. I ordered fabric. I wanted something very drapey. I ordered rayon fabric, which OMG is a little challenging to work with. I was cursing away at, you know, as I'm taping the fabric down, but the end result is quite lovely. The pattern itself, let me tell you about the pattern. So the pattern is, it's very easy to follow. I think ambitious beginning sewers, sewists, can make this for sure. But I'd say have at least one or two garments under your belt. It's not difficult, but just once you have to do the gathers and sew that together, it can be a little tedious. And so as not to discourage you from future uh, garment sewing, I'd say have a couple of projects under your belt and then you can certainly do this no problem. Now, this is the first time I've sewed sleeves. These are raglan sleeves, and this is the first time I've sewn sleeves in a garment. All my other garments have been sleeveless. Uh, and actually, it was no problem. I had no problem. So if you're an adventurous beginner, and maybe you've never sewn before, and you feel like a challenge, you could probably do this. Just take your time, and, and it's, it's no problem. So it's a raglan sleeve. There's a front, two front pieces, a back piece, and then you have one panel that you cut out five pieces for the tiered um, dress portion. So you, you, you gather, you use two of the panels for one, the top tier that goes from the bodice to the top tier. And then you use three of those panels all sewn together and that's your bottom tier. Now I am five foot four and so this garment hits me just above my ankle, which I love. But if you're taller, it probably would hit you a little higher. I really am happy that where it hits, I love that it hits. I'd actually, I'd almost like it to be a little longer so I could wear higher heels with it. But I guess I could anyway. <clears throat> so that, um, uh, yeah, so I love the length of this dress. And it is, it's so flowy. The rayon fabric is super flowy. I got this fabric. I purchased it at, and the polka dot one that I have sh either have shown you already or will show you at the end. Uh, the polka dot, which is also, it's either a rayon or a lawn. I forget which one the polka dot one is. This is rayon. And I purchased them at fabric.com. So I'm finding a lot of great deals on fabric.com. A lot of beautiful fabrics. And I think it was Kristen from Volenvine that um, I first heard about Fabric.com. And I heard about it a while ago, but I've only recently, since I'm only recently sewing, I checked them out a few months ago. Oh my gosh, so I've been ordering things from them. 
That's where this fabric is from. So, sewing with rayon. <clears throat> I should drink some water. Sewing with rayon. Oh my God. It's, uh, first of all, I taped, I used painter's tape and I taped the fabric to the floor. And I know there are, there are several methods to keep slipperier fabrics from slipping when you're trying to um, cut out pattern pieces. And I know you can use also like those little round circular weights. I decided to use, I have baking dishes, like ceramic baking dishes, which are really heavy. So I taped the fabric down. I put the, I placed my very heavy ceramic <laughs> baking dishes. And then I would lay out my pattern pieces and I would tape both ends. I, I laid the fabric out flat because most of this, you're not cutting doubly, you're cutting single layers except for the sleeves. And so I, I taped both selvage edges and even the cut edge. So I taped everything down and it was still slightly off, which made me a little crazy. I mean, it wasn't biased, but it was just a little bit off. You don't notice it once the garment's all put in place. But I could see that when I would go to line up my edges, they were just a tad, you know, they could be a half an inch off once you squared everything. Nothing was 100% square which 90 degrees, I mean, when I say square, 90 degrees. Uh, so that was a little frustrating. And I pinned, I swear I must have used 50 or 60 pins per pattern piece to pin so nothing moved and you still, and there's still some slippage. Or, or probably it was just in the way I laid out the fabric itself. <sighs> so, so that was a little bit of a challenge. Uh, but then I learned, I forget whose YouTube channel I was watching, but someone had mentioned using a walking foot for slippery fabrics. And I know you can use a walking foot when you piece together um, <clears throat> uh, 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 for quilting because you have such a thick sandwich and the fabrics can move because there's, it's thick. So you can use a, a, a walking foot for that. <laughs> a walking foot. So I decided to try out the walking foot. I did a test drive with scrap fabric, you know, from here. And I said, oh, wow, that's great. My, my fabric doesn't slip so that when I get to the end of my seam, my fabric is not off like a quarter or a half an inch, which was happening uh, with my polka dot version. So I decided, okay, I'm going to try the walking foot. And that worked really well. So everything lined up, although I have to say I pinned like crazy even as I sewed to try to keep all of my seams as even and straight as possible. Um, so if you have a walking foot, give it a try. See how that works for you. It might help with slippier, slippery fabrics. Um, anyway, yeah. So if... You know, if you want to give give a give the walking foot a try, and that might help eliminate some of that slippage with the fabrics. And actually, now that I know, because I've done some free motion quilting in the past on just you know practice things. Well, I made one little quilt that actually one of my smallest little bows on the little Yorkie. He actually has in his little playpen. But I think I'm going to make another one and do some free motion quilting. And now I know I can use that little walking foot. After all of the trials and tribulations with pinning and pressing, it all works out. And it is just such a fabulous, fabulous garment. I just, I'm so happy with it. And you can actually, you can wear this, you can tie this or leave it open. I don't know if it's because this is rayon. I found on the first version, and so I made a few adjustments here. Not to the pattern itself. But I, I sewed, after I did my ruffles, I tried it on. I liked where the ruffles, you know, I, I cinched them and loosened them to, to where I wanted the ruffles to stay put. And then I actually sewed down here, and then I made a few, like, tacking stitches and sewed around so that the, the ruffles... Without that, the ruffles had a tendency of all falling, like with the gravity would pull them and they would all ruffle to the front. And so around the back, my ruffles weren't staying in place. And so I'm even feeling now a feel of them. And so I tacked it in quite a few places around the neckline. Now I can't, you know, of course, I cannot take out 
the the the, the fabric for the bow to, for the tie, um, which is fine. Uh, so I tacked it down just so that it would everything would stay put because I didn't like when I would wear it. I was constantly, you know, moving and re repositioning the ruffles because I felt like they kept falling forward, and I didn't like that. So I think I'm going to have to do that on my other version. I tacked it in the back, right in the center back, but I didn't tack it around all the sides. So I think I may do that because I do find I'm fussing with it a lot just to keep the ruffles in place. Again, not a big deal, and it probably depends on the fabric that you're using. But if you, if you make this and you find that your ruffles are kind of, you know, they're all falling to the front or there's too much gathering here and not enough in another place. You might just want to tack it in a few places just to keep, you know, to prevent some of that from happening. And, oh, I just love this. I just love this pattern. I can't, I actually want to make another one. Oh, and let me show you the fabric. I think I'm starting to become a real sewist. <laughs> like with knitting and crochet, I'm starting to um, collect fabrics. So I'm making a stash. I'm stashing fabrics. Of course, I have no idea where I'm going to put them. But um, So again, from fabric.com, I, I wanted to try working with silk. I know it's ridiculous. I'm, too, I, I'm being too adventurous. But I saw this beautiful silk fabric. And so I'm thinking, I don't know, maybe you guys can comment, those of you who have worked with silk. And this is silk. It's not polyester silk. It's silk real silk and it was expensive so I have to be careful because I don't want to ruin it um, which is kind of dumb you guys right I'm just I guess if I've worked with rayon silk will be sort of the same it's going to be slippery and I'm going to have the same challenges so let me know if there's any tips or tricks that you guys can share with me that will help me working with silk so my thought is this fabric is so pretty and I'm just I'm sitting on it trying to think what to make so I'm thinking I want to make another wilder gown but not I won't make the full-length dress and I won't make the shirt version what I think I'm going to do is make I'm just going to use one tier so I will attach the first layer tier to the garment which will I think fall about my knee either just above or just just above my knee, I think, so that I can wear leggings with it, but it'll be a big, flowy, oversized, like, tunic length um, shirt blouse. I'm thinking, let me show, let me share with you this beautiful, beautiful fabric. Fish and pearls. As I'm standing up, I can feel. So if I do just one tier of the Wilder gown, it will fall just above my knee. So I could actually wear this. <gasps> I have some faux pleather pants, leggings, that this would be really pretty with for sort of the winter, fall, winter months. So you guys, if you have any suggestions on how to work with silk, advice, anything you guys can offer me, please, please, please do. God, I can feel my hair all falling out of this. If my hair is getting long, which I'm thrilled about. And of course, it's still gray. It's still gray. I'm still not dyeing my hair. Uh, <laughs> who cares? I'm gonna let my hair grow long again. You know, put some more layers in it. Costume change. I almost forgot to tell you about this dress. I ended it, and now I'm pulled out the camera again to record. This is Butterick six four four six, and those of you who have been with me know that I first made this pattern in a linen fabric and I had some issues where it was too big and gapy back here and I went according I cut out pattern pieces according to the sizes listed on the pattern and it was still it was too big in places <clears throat> and since I'm learning and I'm not good with making pattern uh, adjustments yet I was just trying to make the adjustments to the garment with this version, what I did is I went down a size. So according to the pattern package, I should sew a size 12, which seems, and just so that for you, those of you new to sewing, the pattern sizing is not the same as ready to wear in most commercial patterns. Not all of them. What was that? Uh, but with Butterick, 
according to Butterick, I should have sewn a size 12. Well, I sort of did that here and it was too big. So I went down to a size 10, or was it 10 and an 8? I forget which, which way it went, but I went down a size. So I cut out, when I did this one, I cut the pattern piece it out a little smaller, and that seems to have done the trick. Um, I also, because I did that, I wanted to make sure, because my waist was a little wider than the size that I cut the pattern for, so I just stitched, when I got close to the waistline or of the bodice, I stitched a slightly narrower uh, seam allowance than I did up closer to the arms. And I think you can get a sense that it fits lovely across the back. And I think this version fits much better. I will do some video and or photographs so that you can see the whole thing. I guess because I, I talked about it a lot on this one, <clears throat> I'll just quickly go through. The two front pieces are slightly different because one, this one has the gathers here and then um, the other side does not. And then there are two back pieces because you have a zipper, you have pockets, and then you have the skirt. So you sew up your bodice, you put in your lining, you turn it inside out. I actually, with this garment, they have you with the lining, you top stitch around the sleeves because you can, around the neckline, you can do your under stitching to keep the, the lining inside the garment. And I was able to eke that out here. It was a bit of a challenge. It's kind of a pain to do it, but I was able to do it so that I, had, I didn't have to top stitch here. But you can do it either way. I mean, the pattern says top stitch, but I prefer the under stitch to keep all the lining tucked in. And actually, I'm getting pretty good at I have to say, pat myself on the back, I am getting fairly good at doing that under stitching to keep the lining in. So I get it so, I, I'm so proud when I get it so close, like two millimeters, from the, the stitching seam, and I'm able to just go right along that edge, very, very close to keep the lining turned under. So that's one good thing. Practice, practice, and then you get perfect, or close to, <laughs> close to perfect. That's about it. I, this is a really very easy pattern. I think I've mentioned before that Constance from Stitching Over the Days was the, where I first saw this pattern. She has made quite a few versions of this, and when I saw it on her, and she's such a cute thing, just cute as a bug, uh, I, I really wanted, I said, oh my gosh, I wanna try that pattern. So I, I do, I love, love, love the pattern. It's really That about does it for today. Thank you so much for tuning in and watching, spending a little time with me. I'm sure it's, it's kind of a fast and furious, quick episode. Um, but I just, I wanted to touch base and I don't have a lot, but I still wanted to come and say hi. I miss you guys. I miss everyone. And I, gosh, I can't wait until we can all be together again at our knitting events. Thanks guys. Talk to you soon. Be well. Bye.